our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. To mark 400 years since Galileo Galilei's first observations of the stars through a telescope, 2009 has been declared International Year of Astronomy. The Paris Meudon Observatory is getting ready to host a special event at the start of April called the 100 Hours of Astronomy. This is a major event that will bring together professionals, astronomers and the public. And this is going to take place all over the world, more than a thousand sites spread all over the world. And we'll share with the public and with amateur astronomers our passion for astronomy. Astronomy for me is not just science. Of course, we have to go through the university and do a number of years of studies. Uh, but astronomy is a combination of science and art, and it's there to help people dream and take their imagination out in space. Space and imagination are no stranger to Athena Kustenis, an astrophysicist recognized for her work on one of Saturn's moons, Titan. Likewise for Marcello Corradini of the European Space Agency, an expert on our solar system. He describes the three planets we know most about. Venus the Earth and Mars are really three, uh, three brothers. If we take our planet and we move it slightly towards the Sun, most likely we are going to reproduce again Venus. Otherwise, if we move the Earth a little bit far away from the Sun, then it cools down, which is exactly the situation of Mars today, with a large amount of uh, fruits and water mixed with the dirt on the surface. <laughs> Of the eight planets in our solar system, four are what's known as telluric. That's made up of solid material. They are the three brother planets already mentioned, Mars, Venus and Earth, along with Mercury, the closest to the Sun. Its proximity to the Sun means Mercury has no atmosphere. The closeness of Mercury to the Sun is uh, uh, had uh, in the past, many billions of years ago, an impact on the internal evolution of the planet. What happens is that the solar wind, uh, the bow shock as we call it, can penetrate sometimes uh, during very energetic storms down the surface of the planet. And this creates the flow of currents into the mantle during the formation of the planet. ESA and its Japanese counterpart, JAXA, are working on a mission to explore Mercury in 2014. The two agencies will study the surface and the interior of the planet as well as its magnetic field. But high solar gravitation makes the mission a risky one. It's a very special planet, very difficult to reach because the real uh, uh, dangerous situation is that uh, during the orbital insertion, if you make a mistake, you fall into the sun. The four other planets of the solar system are made of gas. The enormous Jupiter, Saturn with its rings and numerous moons, and then the coldest and least understood, Uranus and Neptune. So how were they formed? The heavy materials fall towards the sun, and then the material is available to construct planets such as the Earth, Mars, Venus and Mercury, while the lighter materials, oxygen, hydrogen and helium, are ejected because of the centrifugal force towards the other parts of the solar system. Yes, gas. It's, um, it's gas but not as... Well, it's, uh, on, the, on the outer surfaces it's, it's gas as we know it, but uh, as you go, uh, go into the centre of these planets, the, uh, the temperature and pressure increases massively, and so, uh, so there's, nev there's never any sort of hard surface at all. Um, the, 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 the gas molecules get more and more compressed, and more, uh, uh, but they, they remain fluid um, throughout the entire, the entire interior of the planet. Patrick Irwin's work centres around the composition and the mechanics of the gaseous planets. He's a researcher and lecturer in planetary physics at St Anne's College, Oxford. Jupiter it's so big and so hot and so, so much high pressure that the, uh, the hydrogen actually turns into a, a form of metal. 
And so almost three quarters of the entire volume of uh, Jupiter is actually made of this metallic uh, form of hydrogen, which uh, gives rise to its very, very strong magnetic field. To help us understand the makeup of these non-solid planets, let's look at what happened to the debris of comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 as it hurtled towards Jupiter back in 1994. As they came in, they, they, um, they, they basically um, started to evaporate, much like um, when a, a spacecraft and, um, and a shuttle come back into the Earth, you get very high heating as the thing comes in very quickly through the upper parts of the atmosphere. So, uh, so these, these fragments would have uh, very quickly got very, very hot and vaporized and um, would, would basically have just been evaporated long before they got down uh, into the deep atmosphere. The gas surrounding Jupiter's core is vigorously blown around the surface by violent winds. The winds blow in different directions and cause unpredictable eddy currents. On, on Jupiter you have um, uh, this alternating series of, of winds. So, so the winds go, uh, for, for, they go east and then west and east and west. And at the boundaries between where the winds are shearing, you can form eddies. And the, the, the Great Red Spot is, is an unusual one because it's, it's, it's very, very big. The diameter of it is the same as pretty much the same as the Earth. Um, but but you know, so it's, it's, it's thousands of kilometres across. It's, it's actually only about sort of two or three hundred kilometres thick. So it's, it's a very thin thing on top of a, a very wide thing. These eddies, they, they seem to drive the Great Red Spot by being uh, co constantly um, absorbed into the outer into the outer ring and, and keeps the winds going. And we think they also drive the, uh, the zonal winds of Jupiter, which, uh, which blow very quickly east and west with speeds of, of sort of 100, 100, uh, 100 meters per second. Less huge but similar in composition to Jupiter is Saturn. The ESA NASA project Cassini Huygens helped scientists understand far better the planet and its 60 known moons. That leaves Uranus and Neptune, the furthest, coldest and most mysterious of the gaseous planets. Voyager 2 provided some close-up images at the end of the 1980s. These days the work is continued by more powerful telescopes based on Earth. All the materials with which the planets are formed, but not only the planets, also the human beings which are walking on this planet called Earth, all the materials come from the Sun. The Sun, the object around which we all revolve and from which we have all evolved. Even the most evolved materials, which is the biological material, the flesh we are made with, when we analyze in the fine details, we find out that we are made of carbon, of oxygen and hydrogen mostly, in a very complex uh, combination of these elements. But carbon, oxygen and hydrogen are one of uh, the three among the fundamental elements coming from the sun. So we may say that even the human beings are made with uh, stardust. Man can be humbled by the thought he's nothing but the product of space dust, but he can also be slightly proud that he's beginning to understand his cosmic ancestry.